Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Alpha Tenix. This episode is going to be slightly different. It's going to be about my Westfield. So, unfortunately, guys, it's not about Alpha and Mayos. But don't worry, stay tuned. Up and coming videos are coming shortly. I've done more work to my doors. They're just over there behind the camera. So this is a 1993 Ford Pinto engined Westfield and if you're unfamiliar with Ford Pintos they were in the Cortinas and the Ford Escorts I think even some transit vans back in the 1970s 80s and they were good engines good reliable engines for this type of setup it's certainly not the most modern of engines but they are a good entry level to to Westfields and if anybody building them this engine has 45 mil webbers and uh, last year I did a lot of work on the head, removed the head and port and polished it, uh, matched the inlet manifold with the inlet ports. So, which brings me on really to some issues I do have and that's overheating. Ever since I put the engine back together again, I'm getting hot, I've got a temperature gauge in the, on the dash to tell me. So I'm going to do the basic things first. There are several things that I can do to investigate this. One is to look at the thermostat. Thermostat is rated at 88 degrees centigrade. I think that's 192 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to perform a kettle test on that. So that means removing the thermostat, putting it into a container, pouring in some hot water, measuring the temperature and see if it opens at that set temperature. And it should also close at that same temperature as well uh, once it cools down. So two failing modes, stuck open or stuck shut. That will, being if it's stuck shut, it will prevent the bypass of the water going through the radiator uh, and uh, inhibit the cooling of the engine whilst it's running. I'm going to remove the thermostat housing. You can see the coolant pipe has been removed already. I'll drain the system down and we're going to remove the thermostat. See now I've removed the, the thermostat, I should just remove the back of the gasket, I can replace the gasket with a new one and I've got the new, well potentially new thermostat in if this one has, has failed. Uh, first I think really it's important to just explain what a thermostat is and what it does and how it works. It's designed to control the temperature of the water in your car engine. It is essentially a valve which opens as the temperature heats up, allowing the water to circulate around the bypass system, which is essentially around the radiator and back through the engine into the pump and away we go again. As the engine cools, the thermostat shuts and it allows the warm water to heat up again and it opens. So it goes through many cycles. If the engine is working really hard, it's probably open the, the whole of the time. It's constructed by a body and a copper core in here. Um, it also has a spring. This spring allows it to shut under normal conditions. So when it's closed, it's a, it's a spring that pushes against the acting valve. However, as the copper heats up, inside here it actually works against the spring and opens up the valve so if i just push this out what will happen is that the valve opens allowing water to pass through this particular thermostat should open at 88 degrees centigrade or 192 degrees fahrenheit see water boils at 100 degrees centigrade i think it's 212 degrees fahrenheit so this should be opening before any boiling occurs in the engine. A kettle test is a very simple test. It's essentially boiling a kettle, putting the thermostat into the container, measuring the temperature to see if that temperature is achieved and the thermostat opens. To verify the temperature of the opening of the thermostat, I've got a temperature probe in the water that's room temperature 22 degrees at the moment 
and I'm going to now add the thermostat. So we're looking to see if it opens at 88 degrees centigrade. So actually it's registering at 86 degrees. So it's not even hot enough to open the thermostat. Okay, so I'm going to have to resort to plan B because I just wasn't able to achieve the set temperature using the kettle. So I've reboiled the water and I'm going to bring the water up to temperature using on the hob and we're going to try and see if we can get to 88 degrees so we can open the thermostat. Okay, so we've achieved 91 degrees centigrade. If the thermostat doesn't open, then we do have a problem with that particular thermostat. So at the moment, the temperature is 90 degrees. I think we can just about make that out on the, on the camera. We'll just leave it in there for a couple of seconds. Longer, but I cannot see that thermostat opening up yet. I'm gonna get my tongs. Still the thermostat has not opened. It went 93 degrees. So the thermostat has now opened, but at 96 degrees, that really is too hot for me, especially on my engine. I think we're just gonna have a, run a runaway scenario where in fact the fan cannot overcome the heat that's generated by the engine and is unable to cool it. So I do have one solution. So that was an interesting test. My thermostat rate at 88 degrees centigrade actually opened up slightly higher temperature, 92 degrees centigrade, which has in fact caused me concern because I do not want to put this back in the car and allow the temperature to reach that high before the thermostat opens. So I have purchased a lower temperature thermostat, an 82 degrees centigrade, which I'm going to install. It is interesting to note that these do not have any bypass holes in them. And a little trick here will be when I install this thermostat, is I'm going to drill a small three or four mil hole through the casing here and install that at the top of the thermostat housing. Allow the air to bypass it and to bleed through to allow it to escape as the water fills up in the, in the engine. So that's a little trick. They don't come as standard, but it's a little trick to prevent any air locks. Another likely cause of overheating is that these engines are prone to air locks. There are some simple things that can be done without spending a penny. One of them is to ensure that when the water, the coolant is filled up in the engine, that it's done gradually. It's almost done at, at the point of assembly of the coolant system. Because the, one of the issues is, as the header tank sits quite low, and if the bottom of the header tank is actually lower than the, the head of the engine, then it's going to cause expansion issues, air locks, etc, etc, and it won't allow the water to, to fluctuate and expand. When I put the water in, I just filled up the water from the, the header tank, and the header tank I know was low in the car, the top of the engine is actually higher than the bottom level mark of the header tank and this header tank needs to come up. I put a straight edge along from the top of the bonnet through to the to the bulkhead. What I'm going to do is just drill another hole here and come up higher, maybe 10, 20 mil, and increase the height of the, the header tank. So when the water does rise, there's still some room for the water to move up and down inside the header as it should. This potentially is a, a flaw maybe when the car was built. This will certainly hopefully solve one of the issues I have with the, the car overheating. It's very difficult to get the airlock out and it all comes down to the method of how you fill the water up into the engine. So I just explained that I needed to make sure that the header tank was higher than the top of the head here. So this bracket was sat down on this aluminium plate. I've raised it up with a spacer and this spacer is about 25 millimeters actually in fact. 
So it's brought it up much higher, getting that level of water up. I've gone as high as I possibly can to make sure that the bonnet, when it's on the car, does not foul with the top of the cap. Next, coming out will be the pump, just here. So there's several bolts, three bolts around it, and a seal. So I should remove that now. So I've now got to the point where I put the thermostat in. I've put the, the auxiliary belt on. I've actually put a new pump in here. I decided to put a new pump in there because I want to make sure that all my mechanical components are absolutely spot on and, and as new. I wasn't sure of the the history of the old pump. Uh, they can fail. There's a hole in the bottom of the pump uh, where the, it, it's a telltale sign. If the water dripping out of there, then the seal's gone the pump. But also, when I rotated the pulley, it was notchy and it felt like the bearings had gone. So I replaced the pump. Uh, needless to say, I've got a new uh, supply pipe that comes off here. This actually is the return pipe uh, from the header tank, which is located over there, comes underneath through here and in here. I've now got to reassemble the rest of the top hose and also uh, the breather hose which goes off to the, the header tank. First of all I'm going to top up the water level so it comes up to the level of the pump by filling up this extended hose. This is my new hose. I'll cut this down to length. I can hold this high, allow the water to drain in and I know that the water can come into here through the breathing holes and the, allow the air to ex expel through the hole I made in the thermostat and I should be able to get the air up here. So I can continue filling this now until the water I can see comes up to here. I'm filling up this very very slowly just to so that any air escapes as the water or the coolant goes in. What I like to do is just squeeze the bottom hoses, just pushes any air around the system. So I'll complete the process of reassembling the coolant system together. I shall run the car up and then we'll top up using the header tank. I may even increase the height, of the, remove the header tank and increase the height of it to make sure I get every last bit of air out while I'm starting the car up. Bring it up to temperature keep squeezing all the pipes and just watch that water rise in the header as it comes up to temperature. Keeping an eye out on the thermostat, I can put a temperature gun on the thermostat housing. It'll be a little bit cooler than the actual thermostat itself. I should then be able to see the water circulating around the, the radiator. One final modification that I'm going to make to this cooling system is to fit a, a bleed valve. So this will fit on the top hose, top of the engine, and it'll be at the highest point on the return on the supply to the header tank. What the bleed point will do is allow me to remove the cap and just expel any air out, preventing hopefully all those airlocks that I've been talking about during this episode. You'll see me do that when I start the engine up. I've got the top hose on the T-piece here. Moving down from the supply hose to the header tank, I've got my valve in place, so I've got a bleed valve. And that's it, there's no coming out there, no air. So it's sitting on 80 degrees, just where I wanted it to be. Now having installed that new thermostat at the lower temperature, the fan's on. It's now sitting a nice stable for 20 minutes, with the engine running, dead on 80. I'm going to take it for a drive. And uh, join me next time. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.